Okay, we're live. Uh, it's James speaking. I am super excited. It's 8.30 on Thursday, January 23rd. And about an hour, maybe two hours ago, uh, ChatGPT OpenAI just brought out their very first agent. And if you've been on any of the other videos that I've been talking about uh, with building courses, automating your business, uh, tutorials, lessons, anything about an education business and teaching online, I've been like really, really excited about the idea of having these agents that do all of this work for you in the background. Basically, you create videos and it creates the content and formats for it. This is the first step and it's out and I'm pretty sure I have access to it. Um, so we're going to play around with it and then I'm going to tell you about a whole bunch of things that we're going to be able to farm out, I mean, sooner rather than later that you might have had to pay a virtual assistant to do and or if you're a teacher or someone is a professional educator, it's think of it as a virtual teaching assistant. All the things that you don't want to bother doing but have to do as part of your job can now be done for you with agents. So I'm going to do my best to try it and then I'm going to go over some of the use cases of how that works. And then we'll actually look at some specific examples on how this can actually change everything about what you're doing online as a small business owner, an entrepreneur, and especially if you're in the content creation business or you're a creator content, a creator of content. So again, this is unscripted. It's on the go. And remember, this just came out a couple hours ago today. And if I can get it to run, and I'll tell you why in a minute, if I can get it to run, this is in research mode, which is before beta. So this stuff's moving very quickly, it's exciting, and hopefully we'll be able to get it to work. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up a browser so that you can see where I'm at. And these are just the rough notes that I made kind of going forward, all of the points and stuff uh, I picked out. And I'll take a look at my browser, and the reason I'm doing that is because I'm logged into my ChatGPT account. And my understanding is they have like a free version, a paid version, then there's like a pro version for Teams. It's $200 a month. And there's a whole bunch of videos that are going around over the next couple days. Tonight, they've already started. And they'll be showing demos of how this works. And 99% of the demos will be how to book uh, a, a restaurant, how to uh, have, uh, you know, buy a computer on Amazon automatically, or how to uh, book a resort or a dinner, or have groceries bought for you on a regular basis. So those are kind of consumer items, and you'll see a whole bunch of demos on those. I want to go one step past, but first I got to see if I actually have access to it. Now, I've seen the other demos, done some research. That's what I'm going on today, and what they said was that it's not available to the level of account that I want. But lo and behold, when I went and logged in here in Canada, I'm not even in the States, it says that operator is available. And this uh, tool, basically from ChatGPT, it's, they call it a computer user, user agent, CUA. And basically what this is, is this is one agent of many, but one agent, and it's an agent that is basically in your browser doing all of the tasks that you would normally do in a browser. And that's why we're talking about things like, you know, booking a, booking a reservation at a restaurant, buying pizza, ordering pizza, having groceries delivered on a regular basis, doing an Airbnb or a DoorDash. Those are the kind of examples they're using. So let's take a look and see if I actually get access to it. Uh, I Hopefully I do. If I don't, uh, what I'll do is I'll just kind of explain a couple pieces are, and I'll give you some links to the videos that I saw of the people who are in the States who can use it. So I'm logged in here. This is a paid account, but it is not the pro account the $200 a month, I think I've had this account for, I think, well over a year now, or when it first came out. So I think it's $20 a month or something for me. So on the left-hand side, ChatGPT, and remember, I was showing you a scheduled task, I think, about a couple days ago on how this is how you can schedule a recurring task. And I said, we have ChatGPT where you prompt response. This one, uh, that scheduled task was the one that I said, first step to agents. Operator is a set agent already. So let's see what happens if I go and I click operator. Oh, unavailable in my region. Unfortunate. So it, it's not available for me. I have to go back to ChatGPT. So I'm going to do that right now. So I can't necessarily show it. I will give you links to the people who are doing the demos right now of these examples. But here's what I want you to kind of think of while you're listening to those in the background 
or before you go see them. So how does this apply to a small business? How does this apply to someone who isn't doing fancy stuff or maybe doesn't want appointments booked and they're not going to restaurants and they don't have that consumer use? How does that actually play into what they're doing? So I, I made some notes myself just kind of thinking on how this goes. And uh, they call it a comp computer using agent. That's the actual term uh, that they do. And this is some of the, again, some of the notes that I just put together. So I just want to kind of talk about them uh, as we get going here. And this is, this is technically think of it at the start as a researcher or someone that does all of the research steps or the tasks in order, in sequence to accomplish something, but only in a browser. So anything that you can do in the browser, that's what this agent can do. So if it means going and logging into a site and clicking on a button or doing searches and researches and that kind of stuff, that's exactly what it can do. So this is an operator, it's called operator, something that does the work you normally do uh, in the browser. And it's the first agent and it's one specific agent. And remember, we're gonna have multiples and billions of agents in the future. And basically you just give it a task and it goes out and does that particular task. So I said, think of it as a free teaching assistant, right? Or a free virtual assistant. Um, and when it's on a website or when it's in a browser, what it does is it actually, you start with, you know, like ChatGPT, it looks the same, but when you give it a request, it opens up a virtual browser right within the screen. It's not your browser, it's its browser. And it will actually, you can watch it, it'll click around, enter stuff that it needs to do, it will actually act as if it's you in the browser window on whatever website that it's on. So, um, is it ready to go? No, it's not ready to go at all. This is a research model, it's the one before the beta and then it will come out. But this is the cool thing because you can start thinking about how does this apply to me? What are the things that I can do? Well, you can start being specific with instructions, for example, like all of these instructions we've been giving, what is the address that you're working for? What are the, uh, the location that you work? What are the different purchases that you make on a regular basis or the stores that you use on a regular basis? You can set out and have that in memory so that it's working for you as your agent. Now think when you're, uh, you know, a lot of times if, if you have a virtual assistant or you have people that are working with your business and they're new to a task, what do you have to do? You basically have to go and instruct them on how to do things. This unit is actually something you don't have to do. You only have to give it the end point. This is what I want to have happen at the end. It is smart enough to go through and learn the tasks that actually it needs to take to get the outcome. And it's even smart enough to know that, hey, I don't have the answer for this. You need to clarify something for me and then I'll keep on working through it. Um, there's issues with it, of course, as well. Like, I don't know what's gonna happen necessarily with payments right now. Uh, if you're gonna purchase something, it's in its browser, not your browser. So you can actually, uh, take over their browser. There's a little button that says take over the browser. So you might have to use your screen to add credit card details, for example, if you are purchasing something. So these are the things that I'm kind of, you know, thinking is, is going to change over the while. But the best part is you don't have to watch this. It's not a prompt and response. What it is, it's exactly telling someone to do something and let it go do it. It's going to automate everything when it comes to building and growing a small business, especially if you're in the education space where it involves research, curation, and bringing all of these pieces together. You can even input images as part of the inputs for the tasks and it will act on. And um, you can run three at a time. So it's not just one task. You can run three tasks at a time. And I was going, well, you know what? I better ask ChatGPT. Uh, what are some of the things it will be able to do for me? And some of the answers it came up with were pretty easy, uh, interesting. So what I did is I said, you know what? Um, uh, open uh, open AI op operators coming out. This is a computer browsing agent. All of the examples are ones that are talking about booking vacations, ordering pizza, that kind of thing. I'm looking for examples of how this can be used for someone who's creating educational material, online videos, email marketing tasks, etc. Okay, so here's some examples. Just think of this. If you're putting a course together or a YouTube video, any kind of content creation, you can have it put together all of the research that you need. It's done. Just research this topic. 
and it'll go out and do it. So it'll automatically go browse academic documents, uh, reliable sources, any information, topics, ancillary pieces. This is what we do in Perplexity. The agent goes and does that for you. So you don't have to prompt Perplexity. You don't have to do any of that. It actually gets done for you. Um, you could, if you have frequent uh, terms or search terms or items that you search for on a regular basis or look at, you can have those saved so that you always have or use the same context of what it is that you're asking to do. Um, you can always ask for recommended uh, external information that maybe you hadn't thought of that you can ask it to go and then add it to the compilation that it's put together the research and then figure out is it something I should use or something that I shouldn't use? Is there pros and cons to it and values for it? And you can even go and do a competitor's analysis. So if you're in a competitive industry or you have other, for example, course creators or vid uh, video creators on YouTube, you want to know what they're up to, what they're doing, you can actually have it browse on a regular basis and have it just go and say, hey, this is what they're doing. This is what's working for them. Um, you know, these are what they're not covering. This is something you might want to consider when you're doing your course offerings. Done. Everything's done for you automatically in the background. Uh, if you're actually creating videos, the other one I came up with was uh, using the browser to identify uh, trending topics or keywords in your niche. And it can have it look at Google Trends, at YouTube, uh, href any of the places where you can actually search on what's going on the agent will go out browse all of those sites do all the research and give you a synopsis of what you need to know to do it um, it can actually go and find the assets that you need one of the things that obviously happens is you're creating courses you're creating course material some of the content you can recreate for images but maybe there's uh, 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 assets that are uh, royalty free that you can use. You can have it go out and collect them and bring them in. You can have them go and create them on some of the other AI tools if it logs in and basically gives the prompt to say, hey, this is a picture that I want. So you can start thinking how about how I can start nesting all of these agents or anything that I would do in a browser is now going to be available as an agent that runs by itself in the background. Transcript summarizations, uh, platforms, so, you know, you take a look at it and see what is the best way to create thumbnails? What are the titles that I want to use? What are the styles of uh, featured images that I should use for my courses? How should I explain my courses based on all the other things that are going on? Um, what are the most popular subject lines? Or what is the best way to create email? Or what's the link? Should I use this kind of story or that kind of story? All of these things, again, running in the background. And even email marketing tasks. I'm talking about these because it's like research course creation, marketing, starting, building, growing, email marketing tasks. So doing your research, scraping forums, blogs, social media for any audience pain points or topics that came up on a while, curating content, uh, doing reviews of stuff, A-B testing, being able to send your emails out. I would suspect if it, you're using a browser and if you're in a tool, it can use the browser. So this may even be able to send out your email marketing campaigns, not only write it, but send them and then test them to see which one works better than the other. So, you know, the email marketing, we've got courses, research, and even the community and membership site. So you can look at the topics and start having engagement routines or ways that the agents are going to look and say, what are the topics that people are talking about? How can I use engagement? What questions and polls can I ask? Where can I guide the direction? Think of it as a virtual person within your community that works on your behalf and allows you to grow the community and get people more engaged. Um, you know, even populating some of the materials in the membership site or your campus, it can bring all of these assets in and add them to your library, whether that's a prompt li library or documentations or PDFs, anything that you have uh, for your members. And again, you have to remember this is one agent for doing stuff on the computer. What this means though, is that if you're doing something on the computer and that computer is access or as an AI uh, tool itself, that means that this agent can actually interface with that AI tool. Again, I'm telling you this stuff is coming out really, really fast and I am not a, a spring chicken by any means. And I know this can get a little bit scary. The thing is, it's not going away. And if you want to stay up, you've got to at least kind of think a little bit bigger about what am I going to do with my course business? How am I actually going to grow this? And I think finally, the one thing that stood out for me is 
you know, what is it really going to save me from in my life as a solopreneur or an education business or, you know, a content creator or a small business owner for that matter? If I've got, you know, one employee, five employees, 10 employees, what are the things that I can get rid of that I don't like to do, but they do need to be done for my business? And I'm not talking about ordering pizza, except on Fridays, maybe for all the staff to congratulate them when you got a big deal put together. But I'm talking about business tasks that are putting together. So if I think it from a teacher's perspective and I go, what happens in a classroom other than the fact that when you're teaching? So grading assignment, quizzes, exams, preparing and distributing all of your handouts and worksheets, organizing all the student records, uh, assisting in the classroom setup, talking atten taking attendance and managing uh, the stuff, supervising students during group work. These are the things that some of them you are now going to be able to have a task be able to do. On the classroom management, that's one thing. You use a real live person for the most part, but for any of the prep that happens before class, consider that done now. Designing and print of visual aids, charts and diagrams, preparing, organizing, um, you know, the uh, printing and edit, proofreading and editing the lessons. Um, anytime administrative tasks, meetings or conferences, book a meeting with such and such a parent because their kid is awful in school or this person is gifted and they need something else or uh, Johnny beat up uh, Tommy in the, in the, at, at uh, recess. So again, all of these things we're going to be able to have quickly. And if you're not a teacher and you're thinking about a small business owner, managing email inboxes, responding to inquiries, organizing emails, scheduling appointments, booking travel arrangements and meetings in the future, preparing reports, spreadsheets, presentations, uh, any of the research that you do for any of the marketing, social media, all of the posting, content stuff, looking at what people are doing, monitoring, responding to comments, writing blog posts, editing, proofreading. This is where it's going. This is exciting time. So please don't at least try and keep your mind open to it. I don't want to try and tell you that everything is here today and it's all perfect. No, this is in the research mode. But go and watch the videos that I've linked below. Make sure you go watch them. And then just start to think a little bit, how does this play in for me? Or how does this change the way that I do business today, knowing that in six months or 12 months or 18 months, this is going to be the new normal. So don't think in the past on how things were done in the past because it's, you can't go to the past and that doesn't work anymore. And it's going to work less and less as this stuff becomes more common. And you as you know, most of the people that are on my channel are not, uh, are 45 plus, like kind of try and keep up with this. I know it's confusing sometimes, um, but don't put your head, head in the sand. Ask questions uh, of all of the people that are talking about it directly. But if you're interested in finding out how do I use this to start building, grow my education business, make sure to join the site there, trainingsites.il forward slash join. Uh, I'd love to be able to help you out as we investigate this all together and find out how we can earn extra money sharing our expertise in building an education business. So again, there's a link if you haven't joined the community, it's absolutely free. Please like and subscribe to the channel. I do one to two videos every day that are live edits, no editing, and it's all stuff hopefully that you can use uh, to help you out on your journey. So this is James speaking. Take care. That's it for now. We'll talk to you tomorrow.